you're the latest cub, eh? Yes, sir. What's your name? Arthur Brighton. Well, Art Brighton, your newspaper career starts or stops with this assignment. And don't forget, from now on, news comes first. Yes, sir. You remember that old lady who was killed by what was called a marijuana crazed youth? Yes. Well, that was news. Now I find this woman left in an eccentric cause in her will, a moral cause. That might make her news again. Yeah. You go to that town, follow up the lead, see what you can learn. I don't care how you get in with that young set, but get in. Okay, Linda, read it any way you like, upside down, backwards or sideways. I'm telling you, it still spells Joan Barry gets the money. You think so? Well, I'm telling you something, Jack Howard. Neither you or that money can walk out on me. I don't know about the money, but I'm on my way. Not so fast. Suppose Joan strays from the straight and narrow path. Then who gets Grandma's dough? Mm -hmm. Well. Well. You're a past master at compromising girls, aren't you? Why not, Joan? But don't get too serious about it. Remember, we're still man and wife, even if it is a secret. I can't forget that. Hey, look here, Judge Herbert. You've been doing that to me for 20 years. Doing what? Jumping a king backwards with a man. You can't do that. Well, I did, didn't I? Then you're a cheat. Hey, you can't call me a cheat, Pop Brady. But I did. Well, you did it for the last time. Play check. How's chances of getting a Parisian flip? Never heard of it. You want one of them things? Mix it yourself. Name's Art Bright. Kind of a fancy drink you're mixing. What do you call it? Parisian Flip. What does it taste like? Swell. What do you have? The same. Two Parisian Flips. Yes, sir.
Yeah. I want a vanilla malt. Come on, and yours? Oh, I got a big pine over. Yours, please? Chocolate malt with milk. Chocolate malt with milk coming right up. There you are, Pop. Yeah. Hello, Judge Herbert. Hello, Joan. I want my malt with milk. Coming right up. Gee, Pop, it looks like you're getting prosperous having the soda clerk work for you. I ain't got anybody working for me. What's he doing? Him? He's mixing Parisian. Oh, uh, I hired you just now. There's a jump for you, Pop. That's right, Joan. You didn't see it. <laughs> There's a nice girl. She don't come any better. Well, what are you going to have? Fine ball here. Hello, bright eyes. Still talking to us poor folks? Oh, don't be silly. When is this weenie bake? Tonight. I'm taking Joan. Why, well, I thought Linda was your favorite heartbeat. Tonight it's gonna skip a beat. Go ahead, Joan. I have a date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what are they? Puzzle. What's that? Marijuana weed cigarettes. Didn't you ever smoke them? Oh. Say, oh. you missed a real kick. Something different. That's mm. right. And Linda says the man who sells them told her they wouldn't hurt it. Mm -mm. Come on, give me one. I haven't got any more. They're all gone. You know, those things cost money, and you don't give me enough. Well, I'll get some more money for you tomorrow. Well, I haven't got any more reefers. You want something stronger? What kind of a kick does it have? See what you think. <laughs> You're lovely, Joanne, lovely. I never realized it before. I'm afraid it's the moon. And, and I'm afraid it's the girl. Will I see you often? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And, uh, the next day? No. Oh, why not? Because it's Sunday and I'm going to church with Mother. Hey, this party's dying. And how? Hey, you two lovebirds, get something peppy on that radio. Oh, hey, I feel just like a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your favorite slave. <laughs> Way, ladies and gentlemen, and see Fatima. <laughs> What's that? It sounded like Joan. Help! Help! Give me a hand!
by Joan Barry. You're naked. I fell in the lake, Miss Frisbee. While my clothes were drying, they burned. A likely story. Oh, don't pay any attention to that old battle act. She never believed the truth about anybody anyway. <laughs> Come on, Joan. Come on, Joan. Come on, let's get it. Come on, let's get it. one to know. Your daughter Joan drove into my house in the nude. In the what? In the nude. Well, where did she get it? Where did she get what? Well, what was it you said? I said your daughter Joan, well, she's running around naked. You're talking nonsense, Miss Frisbee. Good night. What happened to your shoes and stockings? I went for a swim in the lake. At night? Oh, don't get excited, darling. It was an accident. Well, did your husband write a good night kiss? Dozens of them. Between the telephone and the scooter, Frisbee will tell the whole town this one minute. be another one like last night. Why not? Joan Berry took off all her clothes and danced the hula. Joan Berry? Okay. She's some wild Indian. She is. Brighton, I sent for you to straighten you out on this assignment. Now, I'm not interested in obscene parties. That's only news and location where it occurs. What I want to know is the underlying cause of such action. Find out if marijuana is playing any part in the lives of these young people. Here are pictures of suspects and known peddlers. Take them with you and keep your eyes open. Now I'm going to show you something that should impress you as to the seriousness of the situation. Marijuana dates back as far as 1090 A.D. A weed was then called by the Arabic word hasheshan, from which we get our English word assassin. During this period, a diabolical, fanatical, cruel, and murderous group living in Syria and Persia committed secret murders in blind obedience to the will of their masters. The heinousness of these crimes aroused all of Europe and Asia. It was their custom that whenever a sheikh required the services of an assassin, a distinctive class known as Fezias 
were intoxicated with hashish, known to us as marijuana. The weed now, as well as then, is rightly accused of exciting the basest and most criminal tendencies in the minds of its addicts. In one of our prisons, a survey recently made showed that out of 450 persons, 125 were addicts of marijuana, ranging from 18 to 31 years of age. Furthermore, the records of a certain district attorney taken over the period of the past several years reveal that in his district, 17 out of 37 of the murderers 13 out of 145 forgers, 15 out of 125 cases of assault and battery were addicts of marijuana. But I'm afraid that my words will not impress you. So allow me to give you a few scenes that I know will have a lasting impression. I saw her standing on the eighth story ledge. She jumped, it's a plain case of suicide, coroner. Suicide to most everyone, but to me, it's murdered by marijuana. You murdered five people, including your uncle. The weapon was found on you. Why did you do it? I, I've had a terrible dream. People were trying to hack off my arms. They were around, trying to kill me. I recognize one of them in my uncle. I had to kill him before they killed me. I had to kill him. Can't you understand? I had to kill him. They killed me unless I killed him. Can't you understand? and make them strong. And how? Here's her first. That street. All right. Linda, gosh. is Jack taking you to the dance tonight? Boy, he's giving me the gate for Joan. Who's your date? Well, I thought Charlie was, but I guess the love bug hasn't bit me yet. I've been dodging him all day. Maybe his love bug's a firefly. Only works at night. Mm. Oh. If you ask me, I think it's a snail and I'm wasting my time. I guess I'd better turn my charms on a new prospect. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mother says that he will go. Oh, I guess I'd better try it again. Which one are you looking for? Oh, no, you don't. You picked him. Now, ask him for a drink. No, I won't. Why, well, I don't even know when he's coward. I bet you the drinks you're afraid to ask him. Okay, it's a bet. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Art. Mine's Edith. You work here at night? Uh-huh. Every night? Not late. Well, uh, what are you doing uh, tonight? Nothing. Why? Well, um... Do you see that girl over there? The one with the hair ribbon on? Uh-huh. She wants a date with you. Her name is Joan. Joan Barry. Swell. Thanks. Okay. Good luck. Pleasure. When does it happen? You and me. Oh, Charlie, don't be a grony. I asked for a date, but for Joan. I don't know what you're talking about. Our date. What date? <laughs> <laughs> no, so. <sir. laughs> Sorry, I, I guess the joke's on me. Thanks for the double cross. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Wouldn't she fall for your line? Maybe it's her instinct. I never was much at dancing. No, a grasping opportunity. Let's hear your line. Maybe I'll buy it. Well, I'll tell you, lady. I'm a one-woman man. I guess it's the Airedale in me. And I never forget. Don't tell me I know. It's the elephant. 
<laughs> is it true that elephants never forget? Sure, but they might just as well. They haven't anything to remember. Oh. Well, get that elephant of yours working and see if you can remember that you have a date with me tonight. You mean? Just wait outside after you get finished work and see. Okay, then. Well, you got your date. Yes, thanks. Nothing doing to treat down me. Oh, thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. He just played a trick on me, Miss Barry. I'm sorry. I really am. Oh, that's all right. I understand. So you are the girl the whole town's talking about. Boss says you gotta get more business. What's he growling about? I'm bringing him plenty. Well, you're gonna bring more and like it. Forget what I told you. Well, did you tell her? Yeah, she'll come through all right. Oh, gee, this is a swell place. Do you live here alone? Oh, no. Uh, when my mother and father get back from Europe, I'm going to let them stay here for a while. <laughs> well, that's nice of you. <laughs> Don't take those all at once. Oh, I'm beginning to... Well, how about am I? Oh, yes. This is going to be a swell party, isn't it? Well, have a good time, girls. You bet. You think we won't? I <laughs> <laughs> met Judge Herbert at Pops today. Did he take the bait? No. The clothes burning gag was too mild for the old moss bag. I'm sorry, Miss Berry. I, I really am. Oh, you're always sorry. You should be an undertaker. Well, you wouldn't want to marry an undertaker, would you? Oh, I don't know. They have wonderful homes. I don't believe you like me. How did you guess it? Well, I'm pretty good at guessing. You'd better see that that darling Joan of yours gets some of these. Okay, I'll take care of it. That's just a moment. Joan's my day. You'll save a dance for me, though, won't you? Maybe.
Come on, honey, let's try. Oh, no, Jack. I'm tired. I want to sit down. Oh, all right. I guess this is my day. You guessed wrong. Jones. You know I don't smoke. Well, your sister does. Yes, I know it. I wish she didn't. I'm afraid Mother will find out. Jack, I'm thirsty. Will you get me a drink of water, please? Would you like some lemonade? I'd love it. Okay. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Losing your technique? Well, if you think so, watch my speech. Come to many of these parties? No, I've never been to one before. Aren't they exciting? Yes. Yeah. Give me a reefer. I haven't got any more. Where can I get one? See that fellow behind me? Get him from him. Parties last pretty late, don't they? Oh, what time is it? Oh, oh, I better get Marjorie. I must go home. I'll find her for you. Uh, Ralph, what do you want? Marjorie, your sister wants you. Don't go home yet, Joan. Okay, sourpuss. <laughs> Joan. She passed out. She's in there. Uh, you get the rest of them out of here, and I'll stay and take her home about dawn. Oh, no, you don't. You leave her here. Maybe Angel Face can talk her way out of this one. Wake up, kids. Party's over. Come on, let's go home. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I want to powder my nose. It'll wake 
wait till you get home. Come on. There she goes again. Dang it all, why is it these kids must always cut capers at the wrong time? Darling, I'm not criticizing you. Don't try to baby sister me. I know what everybody in town is talking about. Even Judge Herbert. Mother told me you didn't have a chance of getting Grandma's inheritance now. And we could have done a lot with the money. I realize I've made a mess of things. But honestly, I don't know what happened. Oh, no, of course not. You can pull the wool over Mother's eyes, but you can't fool me. I'm going in for some of that free love, too. Marjorie, what an awful thing to say. Well, if you can get away with that sort of thing, so can I. And from now on, I do as I please. And neither you or Mother are going to stop me. Marjorie, don't talk like that. You don't believe I me. believe one thing. You spent the night with Jack Howard. Which is quoting from the official code book number seven. Page 32... Third line, paragraph 19. My you naughty, no hypocrite. Don't you split hairs with me on the law. You can't tell me there's anything wrong with Joan Barry. She's entitled to that money and she's going to get it. Which is beside the point. I must render a decision that is fair, just, and equitable to all parties concerned, be they friend or foe. Justicia Regnant. What's that mean? To me, it means justice reigns. To you, it means nothing. Oh, talk American, you old bladder skite. Sir, I am. My decision shall be rendered according to the facts and in no other way. And furthermore, I can have you arrested for trying to impede the justice of this court, of our fair city. And furthermore, I drank Persian flips with you. For the last time. You old sort of jiggler. I care about is my girls and their happiness. Oh, Mama, I don't think I'll ever be happy again. <laughs> Everyone is the same such terrible things. <laughs> oh, Mom, it isn't fair. <laughs> of course it isn't, darling. Many things in this world aren't fair. We all get hurt many times, but each hurt makes us a little stronger to bear the next one that is sure to come. People have a funny way of forgetting the blessings and remembering the hurts. You're young, Joan. You must be brave. You and I both know that everything is all right. Now, what's that you always say? Keep your head up. Jim. Good heavens, you're a sight. I'm going to wash your face. Oh, you're so wonderful. Hi, Jack. Hello. I always said Joan Berry would turn out to be no good. Why, her father was as wild as a March hare. He ran around something terrible. <laughs> ran too fast for 
Are you a techie? Why, Henry Brady. He's always sticking his nose in other people's business. The worst old gossip in this town. Come on, let's get out of here. This place is getting to be positively indecent. Hiya, Joan. How about a date? Come on, honey. I'll show you a good time. All right, buddy. Okay. Come on. Get up. Get up, boy. Our time right with you. Yes, that'll teach him a lesson. Too bad it had to happen in here. Well, that's all right. Well, it's not all right. I was at that party last night, and I, I know what happened. Maybe you do, but everyone else in town is against me. Well, I'm not. No, I was born here. And you've never been in a big city? No. Say, you've got something to look forward to. I love it. The hurrying crowds all going crazy. It makes you feel like you're really in the stream of life, really doing big things. Why, you can just feel the throb of the metropolis. Oh, it sounds poetic. Well, it is. Only it's more like big music. The symphony of the city, you know. The auto horns, the traffic noises, the roar of the elevated railways, subways in the rush hour. Say, wait till the subway guard slams the door in your face. Boy, that's a thrill. Oh, it must be great. And that's not all. Museums, theaters, lights, tall buildings. Well, some of them are so big you can't see the tops of them when you're standing on a sidewalk. All you can see is the sky. You can't look at that too long or someone will come along and bump into you and you'll be arrested for jaywalking. And on Sunday, say, it's a real treat walking through those empty streets downtown on a Sunday morning. Not a soul in sight. There's big buildings on both sides. You can just feel the power of the place. It makes you feel sort of awe in Oh, it must be wonderful. It is. Why, Mr. Bright, you didn't need to run out of gas. Anyone in town will be glad to tell you that I don't walk home. Oh, pipe down. That looks like Linda's car. Well, ask her if she won't give us a lift while I get some gasoline. Didn't she give us a lift? No. Said she was in a hurry. I think she did it to spite me. <laughs> nice people we know. What's the matter with you? You look like you've seen a ghost. I thought I'd recognize one of those men. Kids knew Linda. Yeah. Better spot a new place to meet her. Try the hotel. Okay. Well, Marjorie, I thought you were going to stay home tonight. No, I think I'll run over to Linda's for a while. Now, Marjorie, if you're too sick to go to the church social with Joan and me, you're too sick to go anyplace else. You better go back to bed. Oh, all right. Mama, come on. It's late. We won't be very long, darling. Good night. Oh, 
more patient than I have. Well, hello. Come on, what a nice party you got here. I know I wasn't invited, but I fell off a little. I hope you don't mind my gate crashing. Ooh, you smell terrible. I'm sorry. Got any perfume? <laughs> Leave him alone. I need some new customers. What are you looking for? I have some cigarettes. Somebody stole my smokes. Try one of these. Marjorie? Marjorie? She must have gone to Linda's after I told her not to. Well, I'll phone her and tell her to come home. You'll do nothing of the sort. I'm going over and get her. Good morning, Mrs. Barry. I wonder if I could speak to Joan for a couple of minutes. I don't know. Please, I've got to speak to her. All right, come in. I'll ask her. Thank you. Mother. Art Brighton is downstairs. He wants to see you. But I don't want to see him. Well, I think you'd better go down and talk to him. It was nice of him to call.
know there isn't much I can say, Joan, but there are some things you must know. We can't part this way, Joan. You've got to listen to me. Wait. You've got to listen to me whether you want to or not. I believed in you, Joan. It's your turn now. Trust can't all be on one side. It's give and take, 50-50. You mustn't doubt me now. I all night I felt as though the whole world had dropped out from under me. I thought if I could just see you, you'd understand. But you don't. What has your family physician told you, Mrs. Perry? That it's the usual nervous condition of a young girl. But there's something else, doctor. I know it. And I want the truth. Very well, Mrs. Berry. Your daughter is a psychopathic case. She is on the verge of insanity. She has marked symptoms of drug addiction, and I strongly believe she has been using marijuana. A cigarette made out of a narcotic weed. Where would she get anything like that? It's easy enough to obtain. Your daughter is the fourth case I've examined today. All young people with similar symptoms. What will happen to her, Doctor? She'll get well, won't she? With proper care, we may be able to help her. I'll send you a competent nurse. In the meantime, if you note any changes, call me immediately. Good day, Mrs. Berry. Oh, I've been so stupid. It's all my fault. I should have realized something was wrong. Don't blame yourself, Joan. I should have told you. Did you know? Yes. I'm not what you think I am. I'm a reporter assigned to this town to get a story. Remember those two men we saw near the filling station that night? Yes. Well, I recognized one of them as a narcotic peddler. And the one who's passing the stuff is your cousin, Linda. Linda, are you sure? Yes, I made a buy from her last night. Well, you've got your story. Why don't you send it in? But it's more than a story, Joan. Terrible things are happening to young people like your sister all over the country. I know that Linda gave her that stuff, but it's only my word against hers. If these boys and girls won't admit it when they're so sick, why, what chance have I got to prove it? Joan, you've got to help me get more evidence. What can I do? Make a date with Jack. Delighted, sure. Well, well, Joan, when will we make it? Tonight. I'm supposed to be the bad girl of the town. I have the name, so I'll play the game. Let's make it a wild one. Well, baby, I'll throw a party that's worthy of the occasion. Well, now what do I do? Get some cigarettes and bring them out to me. I'll be outside in the car. Okay. Come on, Charlie, give us a two. Oh, I don't feel like it. I haven't got any pep. One of the girls was telling me about a new cigarette that peps you up. Oh, you mean Reese? Yes, that's the name of them. Would you like to try one? Sure, why not? I'm supposed to be on the loose. Okay, okay, then. We, we want Linda, we want Linda, Linda. You pay for mine, Otto. Uh, I have two, Linda. Come on, Linda. Yeah, two right here, Linda. Come on, Linda, two. Brought her here. I did. She's all right. She wants to go to the room. What's the idea? Don't try to pull me fast up on me. Oh, I'm not. If you don't think so, watch her go for the reefers. Oh, Linda. Linda. for them, too, don't they? Mm, yes. Thank you.
getting dizzy. Don't you remember, uh, in town, you're supposed to be a bad girl, and you came here to fulfill your obligation to society. Gee, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. I've got a lot of responsibility. But isn't it fun? <laughs> sure. Don't you remember we were going to run away and get married? Oh, yes. We don't want the gang to know that we're running out on them, so uh, you wait outside and I'll meet you out there. Okay, but don't be Joan, we're going home. No. Come on, we're going home. Now. No. Come on, Joan. Let go of me. Served him right. He hurt my arm. We didn't get married, did we? No, uh, we're going to straighten up first. No marriage, no honeymoon. Oh, that's all right. You'll have a separate room. Connecting. Grand. Well, it looks like we ought to make more dough than that. Yeah. What are you doing listening at that door? I'm looking for my room. Do you find your room by listening? Come on, open the door. Police department. This is Mrs. Berry, and 
My daughter, Joan, is underage, and she went to... We'll be over at that hotel right away. Yes, ma'am. I remember your mug. Didn't I see you at the gas station? Oh, stool pigeon, eh? I have Loco Adana and his partner here. What? Did you get the story? Yes. Well, wait a minute. I'll get you a rewrite man. Wait a minute, Mr. Crane. I've got to find a girl first. I'll get you a dozen girls here. Give me that story. No, you send a man up here. I'll hold him until he arrives. Take it fast. 